skin, big bandage. I am going to be doing a very vulnerable video and I've already tried filming this two times and just couldn't make it through so I'm gonna do it again because I truly believe it is who I am and the reason why I started Banish and the mission and values of Banish. As confident as I might seem on camera or in person, I still go through a lot of feelings of self-doubt and insecurity. I might not share them with you guys, but I wanna share a big part of my self-doubt to this point. As the CEO of and founder of the company, I have been involved in every single aspect. I do payroll, I even know the size of the bubble wraps we wrap the products with. I know exactly what kind of envelopes we buy and the zippers on our banish bags. Like I know every little thing about the business. It's not like I have a business partner running everything for me. I am literally running the business. And I started it, you know, out of my kitchen and now, you know, we have a lot of people working for us. It's great. We were one of Inc. 5000's fastest growing companies. We were listed at 152. I was also Forbes 30 under 30 and like Inc. fastest growing female entrepreneurs. And just I had a lot of accolades because of how hard the whole team has worked. I realized in order to grow the business, I wanted to be around other CEOs and other leaders who had similar sized businesses. And when I went to a lot of these meetups, a lot of them had these like female focused meetups. I noticed that the women groups for whatever reason had mostly companies that were just starting out and it was just not like a peer group because you're you're over here and they're just starting so you have different issues so i joined things like entrepreneurs organization and i joined like ceo roundtables and groups like vistage and stuff and these roundtables have ceos and founders who are probably in like about median like five to seven million in businesses and um, I thought it'd be a really great way for me to share tips and be part of an advisory board with other people and I remember you have to submit your financials and everything to qualify so the company did qualify but I just remember like one of the first days going into these groups you know there's a big boardroom table and there's maybe 12 people sitting in chairs and I walk in and I'm like, holy fucking shit, because first of all, I was the only woman in the room, okay? Second of all, I'm the only non-Caucasian person. And third of all, I'm the only person under 30 in that room, maybe under 40. And I would say the average person in those rooms was like maybe a 43-year-old, six-foot white male with two and a half kids, a beautiful dog, a pristine home, and a stay-at-home wife. And I was walking into one of those meetings and I was like, holy shit, because it brought back so many memories of me feeling so different and isolated. And that's something I've struggled with all my life is feeling different from everyone. I just like felt so insecure. For a while, I kind of thought maybe I don't deserve to be there. Maybe I'm not good enough to be there. Maybe there's a reason why there's no women in these groups. Maybe there's a reason why these women, a lot of them I saw were older and single with no kids, maybe there's a reason. There's no Asian people here, maybe there's a reason. There's no young people here, maybe I need more experience, maybe I don't have a lot I can contribute. And then I thought kind of to myself, because I don't fit in by the way I looked, right? I looked very, very different from everybody. I tried to make myself um, seem more professional, so I would wear like business suits and I would wear makeup to make myself look older and I would wear like high heels to make myself taller and I would just make myself seem more authoritative. And the sad part about when you Google image CEO, executive, it's always an older white male, like all the time and very rarely is it a young Asian female as you think of a CEO of a seven-figure business and I just thought to myself like maybe I shouldn't be here maybe I'm not good enough and so I kind of changed the way I was to fit in I also like wasn't as vocal as I should have been as I wanted to be I kind of in those situations put myself in the role that I thought I was supposed to play which is a submissive Asian girl and just listening and nodding my head and agreeing but not really voicing my opinion and I had to do a presentation on the company the next 
day and I was so scared because again, I look different, I don't feel like I belong, oh my God, there's all these older people here, they're gonna judge me, my business is so different from all of theirs. The way we do things is very like innovative, I mean, it's innovative, but it's just not normal and I was just so afraid of being judged and all this kind of stuff. And I was thinking to myself like, Daisy, go back to why you started the business and what the mission of Vanish is. And the mission of Banish is to be yourself and be who you are and own it. And to own yourself, your flaws, your scars, your pimples, your acne. But don't try to change yourself to be accepted for whatever society tells you to. And I said, Daisy, if you're going to present tomorrow and if you're going to present wearing something that you never wear and looking like something you never look like and doing this beautiful PowerPoint presentation and the leather bounded portfolio, that is fundamentally not who you are. You don't ever carry a leather bound portfolio, you know? You put your notes on a sketch pad. I said, Daisy, what's the point of running your business? What's the point of doing everything that you do for Banish if you're going to just not be authentic? Like, what is the point of you being in these groups if you're not gonna be who you are? So at that point, I took a risk and I was like, okay, I'm gonna present tomorrow but fuck it, I am going to be completely who I am. I'm gonna present on like this unorganized PowerPoint with my artist notepad, and I'm going to wear Lululemon, and I'm going to wear big pink earrings, cause that's just who I am, and I'm gonna have my bright yellow nails, and I'm gonna present about the company. And I did and I was shaking the entire time, like literally I was like so nervous and shaking, but at the end of the presentation, I could almost feel like everyone's jaws dropped, like, like, oh my God. Everybody was so impressed. They were like, wow, this like little Asian girl is like super cool and like super innovative and she does so many cool things. And at that point, I just felt like so confident about who I am and who I was and that I can portray myself in the way I am and that the people who really care about me or who are gonna really look at the business in the business, not at the superficialness of the business, is gonna get it, right? And they got it. And ever since then, in those groups that I'm part of, I and totally embrace who I am. I wear whatever I want, which is usually cute yoga clothes, and I'll wear my like big hoop earrings and my bright nails, and I will be that person that looks off and looks like she doesn't really belong there, but, in meetings and in presentations, I contribute equally and fully and I share so many great insights and I feel like I have so much to contribute to these groups. Before, I felt like I was trying to take advice from everybody and I was trying to figure out what I was doing wrong or right and all that. But then I realized like once I got the confidence to be myself and to be in my element and to just know that I belonged in these groups, I was able to give a lot of advice and I love when people email me and ask me for advice on things and they'll be like, you know, two times my age, but it flatters me a lot because they respect what I have to say and how I do certain things. There were times at Banish where I also felt like I needed to bring somebody on in order to scale the business because again, I didn't see anybody at my level of company that looked like me. So I thought, okay, Daisy, I need to bring on somebody older with more experience. And many times this was bringing in a older white male <laughs> who had more experience. And the thought had come across my mind thinking maybe I need to hire an outside CEO or maybe I need to do all these things because maybe I'm not capable enough as a leader. I have hired people who are more experienced and people think experience is so important, but what I realized from this is that these people simply haven't worked out because I think with experience brings almost a stubbornness in how certain things are done in a sense, but also just might not fit our culture, might not fit our innovative style of how we do things. And I realized that if I wanna grow the company, I have to grow it. It has to come from me. It doesn't matter what I look like. It doesn't matter if I fit into a certain mold. There is nothing that says that I can't do it. I told myself, Daisy, you cannot 
not be in these groups, you cannot shy away from hanging around these people because you don't look like them. You have to be in those groups and you have to be who you are and you have to join them because you need to understand how they're scaling their businesses and you need to know what to do and you need to get the referrals and the advice that they do. You can't just shy away from it and be around people who look exactly like you because you feel more comfortable or at ease with. Since I've come to this realization that I can be who I am and I can be successful the way I am, I don't have to look like anybody else and I don't have to be like anybody else to be successful in terms of what my definition of success is. I've just felt this renewed sense of confidence and this renewed sense of purpose and vision and I'm just so, so freaking excited. Think of Oprah, like if you, if you were to tell anybody like 30 years ago, this black poor woman, this woman would be a billionaire, like think of how many people wouldn't believe you, right? Just because she doesn't look like all the other billionaires out there in the world doesn't mean she can't be a billionaire, right? Like, just because someone doesn't look like the typical blah, blah, blah doesn't mean they can't be blah, blah, blah. And that's the whole thing about Banish, right? Just because you don't look like a typical supermodel, just because you're not thin and 5'11 and blonde hair and blue eyes doesn't mean you can't be beautiful. You can be whoever you wanna be and you can define what that means. So for me, being a powerful CEO, a leader, means this little Asian girl who wears Lululemon leggings and a t-shirt and her hair in a ponytail and Nike sneakers. Like that's who my definition of a CEO is. And there's nothing that says I cannot be successful being that person. Just like Oprah needs to change who she fundamentally is to be successful. You have your own definition of what it is to be successful. You have your own definition of what it is to be beautiful. You have your own definition of what it is to be powerful. And you don't need to change just for anybody else. And honestly, I'm so glad we have role models like, for example, and I'm going back to Oprah, but I'm so glad we have role models like her because think about if she tried, if Oprah tried to be somebody she wasn't, she definitely wouldn't be who she is today and not as successful and powerful and empowering as who she is today. So I always tell myself, Daisy, don't try to change yourself. Don't try to, you know, copy other people's products or ideas. Be who you are and have almost purity in who you are because this is like your life like I always think this is my life and what's the point of living my life if I can't be who I am I think there's nothing more catastrophic than living a life that is not true to who you are and so keep that trueness intact in yourself and don't try to be like everybody else and that is really why at Banish we work so, so, so hard to spread that mission of being who you are and owning it and sharing it with everyone because we don't have to look like everybody else, you guys. No matter what we do, you can be who you are. Be authentic, embrace all the stuff about you. I'm so excited to be my definition of what a CEO is, to be my definition of what a leader is, to be my definition of what I want the company to be and not have it impacted by people who are telling me, you should do this, you should do that. This is neat, this is who I am, this is the way I want to shape and this is what I want it to be in my vision, in my creation. That's good enough, that's good enough. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this has inspired you guys to live authentically and embrace who you are and I hope you guys can empower other people to be who they are and not like everyone else. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!